All right, Brian, we, it looks like you've taken the piston out of the car, and then these are the new pistons that we're putting in. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the changes that we've made to these pistons over the past few years to get them to handle the kind of horsepower that we're generating out of these engines. Okay, so these are the pistons that came out of the engine we took apart earlier. Uh, it's a stock piston versus uh, the aftermarket piston. It's got a lot, lot more dish to it. The, the valve reliefs have been uh, radiused. It's got a ceramic coated head. Um, it's got a coated skirt. It's got a lot of structural support inside. It's got a, a hardened pin. We've had some pin wear, so we've upgraded to a, a harder wrist pin. Um, they've also moved the structural support inside to make it a little stronger. Uh, it's got an... Uh, did you want to say something? Now it looks like these are cut in here. Why are, why are these radius to them? This is radius to, to clear both the crankshaft and the oil squirter, but they've also moved this structural support closer in so you don't have a lot of piston uh, collapsing on the skirt. Okay. So it's made it a lot stronger. Awesome. Um, the other thing is, is it's actually got a little ac accumulator groove in between the first ring and the second ring. That's helping the uh, rings actually stick to the cylinder wall under boost. Uh, other than that, uh, the coated skirt is helping quite a bit also. We can run a tighter bore clearance with the coated skirt. Even though it is a forged piston, we don't get a lot of piston rock. So the, the rings aren't rocking in the bore also. Okay, we're going to move on to the connecting rods now. We have a stock connecting rod versus uh, aftermarket rod. Okay. Um, they're running ARP rod bolts. We'll take one of the rod caps off and you'll be able to see the dowel pins to make the rod cap connect to the connecting rod a lot stronger. Uh, the factory rod is a fractured rod, so it's been machined and then it's been fracture cracked and broke. So they're trying to add strength so the cap isn't actually moving on the connecting rod. The aftermarket rod is a little stronger than the factory. Um, it's actually a lot thicker also. Okay, the piston rings also I wanted to talk about. It's, uh, it's a plasma molly on the second ring. It's actually got a little bevel cut into the ring, which is actually helping uh, scrape oil off the cylinder wall. Uh, the top ring is a ductile iron uh, ring, which will take a lot of heat and a lot of abuse from uh, turbo boost. So hey Brian, after we bring you these rods, how do you make sure that there's not a problem, like a, a tolerance issue with them? Uh, it comes down to one of your hairs is about three thousandths thick. This gauge here reads in tenths of a thousandths. So this number one on the gauge is one thousandths and then it goes to two thousandths. So I'm double checking the manufacturer's work to make sure the rods are within spec. So I've got the gauge set up to read zero, which is the housing bore size. So I kind of rock the gauge back and forth a little bit and that's telling me that that rod is within size. So I'll, I'll grab another connecting rod and I'll measure it also. I kind of run it back and forth, zeroing the needle. So these seem to be within a tenth of one another compared on sizing. So like I said, one of your hairs is three thousandths. This is three thousandths on the gauge. So it's reading in tenths of a thousandths. It's very accurate. So now we're uh, installing this oil squirter. It feeds off uh, the oil galley and it's spraying uh, oil on the bottom of the piston to help cool it.
Okay, so now we're setting in the main bearings. We're running greens across the across all six, and this front one's a white white bearing. Why are you running a white bearing in the front? Um, I'm noticing the crankshafts on them uh, are running the timing chain up front, so they, I got a little bit of wear on the crankshaft. So I'm tightening up that main main clearance on the on the front main. And the white bearing's tighter than the green one. Correct. Yes, it's about two tenths tighter. Okay, I got some ARP lube on the mainline studs, so I'm gonna install the mainline studs and then set the cap. Okay, we're back to, we got the main bearing set in the block where we got the ARP mainline studs in. We're gonna torque these uh, nuts down which have ARP lube on them to uh, 60 foot pounds and then we're going to come in and uh, board gauge the, uh, the bearing clearance. Often, Brian, when we bring you engines that are calling for a different color of bearing, which is the thickness of the bearing, you sometimes order bearings that aren't that color code. How come that is? Um, the crankshaft is a standard crankshaft. Uh, BMW is putting on a, a green, a white, a yellow code on the crankshaft. Um, when I order bearings from you, and we'll get to talking about the block here in a minute, um, when I'm miking the crankshaft, I'm feeling the tension on the journal. It comes down to, I order a lot of whites on the front because the timing chain's really pulling a lot on this front journal. And when I'm miking the crankshaft, I'm, I'm feeling the tension on the micrometer. Can I feel that? Sure. So it's gonna be a lot snugger on on the six here, and then you're going to find the tension. Okay, that is really snug there. Now you were saying on the number uh, one. On number one, it's actually about a half a thousand smaller. Oh yeah, you can. So, it, it's basically falling over there pretty good. So basically, when I come in and I mic the crankshaft, I'm kind of feeling, let's say, a peanut butter drag, like peanut butter on on toast. Uh, then when I come up to this one, it's just it's falling over because when I'm reading the gauge, it's a, it's it's about a half a thousand smaller on this front journal. So when I call Josh over there and I order bearings, um, I am uh, sizing up this main line. So a lot of times ARP wants you to line home the, the the block. So what I'm doing is I'm actually torquing up the main line to 60 pounds. The factory is running about 80 pounds of torque on the factory bolts. It's a 90 degree torque plus another 90 degree torque. So ARP says they're getting a lot more clamping force on the main line. Um, so what I'm doing is, is I'm, I'm running a standard bearing, I'm running a standard housing, but I'm also setting up my bore gauge, which this is a line bore, bore gauge. This reads in one thousandths and tenths increments. So. Um, this front journal, as you can see, is reading one thousandths clearance on the gauge. So when I come in here and mic this, it says one, but my crankshaft is a half a thousandth small, so it's actually reading at one and a half. So when I come down to position two and bore gauge it, it's also reading at one and a half. If you can see this on the bore gauge, at one and a half clearance. And it does this one and a half down to number three also. So what, what I'm doing is I'm not line honing the block, but I am bore gauging every journal and ordering bearings from you that fits the journal, that fits the crankshaft to so, get the proper clearance. So the point is the clearance on each main bearing will be the same. It will be the same, yes. about 
about this BMW crank? Uh, it's probably this blue color that everybody comes in and asks, why is it blue? Why is it blue? So the reason it's blue is it's a, it's a heat treating process that's making the crankshaft really hard. Okay. So that hardness is a nitration, and that's what that bluing is. So what is the nitration? What does that mean? It's like an electrical charge that uh, is going on. So it's a molecular structure of the crankshaft making a surface of it really hard. Oh, okay. So it doesn't, doesn't wear. Yeah, and you know, we've never seen a problem with these crankshafts breaking. Uh, is that, is it's that part a... of that hardness okay. factor. They do it a lot, a lot on their diesel stuff also, okay. putting this nitration into the crankshaft. Some of them will only be blue on the ends. This one's actually blue all the way through. Excellent. Um, but some of them will be just like a cast iron piece in the center, and I, I don't know why that is. Okay. Um, we got the bearings in, and uh, earlier we had shown you some bore gauging on the main bearings. So we got the studs in. I've also done some ring filing when you guys were out at lunch. Okay. You know, left me here. <laughs> I was uh, so doing some ring. So when you said ring, ring filing, what exactly are you doing here? So what I'm doing is I'm uh, fitting the rings to the bore. Okay. So I'm sliding the ring into the cylinder, and then I'm sliding the piston in to square the ring up in the bore, and then I'm doing a little file on it, now, opening you, up the gap. Can you show us kind of on that ring? I know they're already in there, but yeah, they're already in here. What are so you, exactly. Are so you what filing? I'm actually filing is when this is in the bore, this is butted up really tight. So what I'm doing is I'm opening up this this ring gap. Because you're looking for a certain ring gap there once you put it in the bore. Correct? Yeah, depending on what stage the motor is and how much boost it's going to be running, I'm running a certain gap per engine depending on how the customer is going to be using the car. I got you. And all of our stage two and a half, three and fours are all using the same ring gap. Correct. Right. So now I'm going to put some Clevite bearing guard on the main bearings. And what is that for? This is like a pre-startup lube. So this one here I'm doing now is the thrust which when you step on the clutch, it's pushing the crank into this radius uh, flange bearing. Oh, is that why it's the one around the edge? And yeah, that's so why this, that this number six looks different than the rest. So when you hear about somebody's thrust bearing going out, that's the bearing? This is the bearing number six that uh, on this model. Some of them will run them in the center, some of them will run them in the rear. The BMWs like to run them uh, on number six. So when you're stepping on your clutch, that's pushing the crankshaft forward. inside where the sleeve is uh, in this area here you can actually see the dart and sleeve oh, inside there. there this one's measuring at, at 231 232 so that's a hundred thou yeah you're talking almost a hundred thousandths thicker 